Okay, we have a new motherboard platform. This is the Asus ProArt X670E Creator Wi-Fi. And then on this side, we have the Asus ProArt X570 Creator Wi-Fi. Now let's have a look, what's the difference and is it worth upgrading to the new platform apart from just the CPU upgrade? Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So then we have the X670 on the right and X570 on the left. Now there's some interesting similarities as you can see we can still see the pro art theme kind of going on. There's the chipset design on the previous one and then on this one. Interesting in the chipset design goes like kind of longer rather than this one even though this X570 chipset heatsink looks actually bigger. Funny story I actually broke this X570 motherboard. As you can see some of these SMDs in the back of the motherboard here I shaved them off accidentally when shooting the thumbnail when I filmed this video. It's quite embarrassing. That's it. That's the end of the motherboard. So I'm using this for like actual showcase pieces. When you're handling motherboard, be very, very careful because there's all sorts of, look, tiny little things. You shave one off, that's it. It's the end of the motherboard. So let's have a look at the big differences then. Obviously the CPU socket is different. Obviously here we don't have any pins, but on the 6, 70E, all the pins are actually in there. Be very, very careful in there because there is 1,718 pins in there. The holes are actually the same size, but the back plate of the CPU coolers is now attached to these screws in there. So on the X670, it doesn't actually come off, whereas on the X570, it comes off and very often when you bought a cooler, you had their actually their own back plate that came with it. The RAM slots, both of them support 128 gigabytes it's X570 is DDR4, X670E is DDR5. Now the very interesting thing here, which actually are not a lot of people talk about, but for creators is very, very important, is that the Ryzen 7000 CPUs with the DDR5, when you have four sticks installed, the speed drops to 3600 megatransfers per second. Doesn't matter which RAM sticks you have, I'm gonna have to test it myself yet. I haven't managed to do that yet, but if you look at it, it's clearly on the specs there that the four stick speed drops to 3600 megatransfers from DDR5. That's very, very, very slow. So even though they advertise it as 128 gigabytes, it's kind of random. In terms of power delivery, now you can see that the X670 has a two eight pin EPS power connectors for the CPU, whereas the X570 had only eight plus four so slightly less. In terms of the fans and the, the RGB connectors, they're exactly the same. The front panel connector here though is actually different. That The new X670 has 20 gigabits in speed and 60 watt quick charge compatible as well, whereas the previous one didn't. That's why we have this four pin in there. Interesting, the X570 had actually six SATA ports, whereas the newer one, 670, has only four SATA ports. I guess we're moving away from SATA. In terms of the expansion slots, as you can see, our graphics card slots are exactly the same width from each other, and we have like a full slot, full slot, full slot, but they are, um, you know, 16, eight, and four but there's like generation up. If there's PCA4 in here, there's PCA5 in here, four, five, and then three, four, that type of thing. I highly recommend you go check out the individual video of this uh, X670E motherboard where I'm going very much in depth detail of all the headers and what they do and what speeds they are and so on. And here we're just looking at the differences. So when we remove the SSDs, you can see that the 670, X670 has heat sinks on the top on both sides, whereas the X570 has only on the top. And then when we remove the bottom heatsink, we can see that the X670 has one extra PCIe slot. The X570 has three PCIe slots and they're all PCIe Gen 4 compatible. Whereas the X670 has four M.2 slots. Two of them are PCIe 5.0 speeds and we don't even have SSDs at that speeds yet. In a moment, they're gonna come out. And then two PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. Interestingly, there's this um, TPU. I'm not sure what type of uh, little chip this is there. 
but on the newer one it's much much smaller than in the older one here which is just interesting okay let's have a look at the io differences this one is the x670 and this is the x570 e so then first thing that you probably notice is, is that the x570 has a lot more audio inputs and outputs so we have a what is it a 5.1 system here that you can put out line out line in there's a sub and rear here as well so basically these two are extra is on the x 670 we only have the three then the wi-fi is exactly the same on both wi-fi 6e and bluetooth 5.2 but now the usb ports have been upgraded the x570 has one two three four five gigabit ports these just blue ports here and then four 10 gigabit ports so there is actually four plus four eight ports but half of them are five gigabit speeds but now we have eight ports as well. One of them is USB 2.0 and then seven of them are 10 gigabits in speed. So the USB 2.0 port you use probably for your, you know, keyboard and mouse and so on. But then the faster ports you can use for SSDs and other connectivity, which is nice. So the newer one has a little bit more better back panel connectivity. The ethernet ports are exactly the same, 2.5 and 10 gigabit ports and then so is the dp in as you can see here and hdmi they're exactly the same interestingly though here now we have the usb c differences this x570 only had two thunderbolt 4 ports but the newer one has now two usb 4 connectivity and also one 20 gigabits per second usb-c port so we've got a little bit faster connectivity of the newer one so in conclusion, what is the difference? Basically, we have a bit more connectivity and PCIe 5.0 and DDR5 in very, very simple terms. Obviously, there is a lot more into it and, you know, better designs and so on. Do you think this is worth upgrading for X570? Apart from the actual CPU upgrade, I want to know from you if this is worth upgrading. Because when you look at them really, really closely, a lot of those features really come to play in the future a little bit like the PCIe Gen 5 SSDs and uh, graphics cards. Right now, they're not so relevant, those specs. But the actual CPU performance is quite a bit better compared to the Ryzen 5000 series. But still, regardless, if you're on the Ryzen 5000 series, maybe running the 5900X or 5950X, then I don't think this is worth upgrading to this X670E at the moment. Maybe when the next generation 9000 comes out, then yes, unless you're doing 3D, then then obviously the 7000 series are absolutely ridiculous in like Blender and V-Ray and so on. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But if you are interested in building a creator PC, there's some links in the description below where you can find videos that I've already made the best bang for buck PC for you. Whether your budget is $750 or up to $5,000, there's a PC build for you where you can choose the parts, configure it to your budget, find the build guide, build it, stress test it, install the drivers, install the OS and get it going so you can get the best PC for your money. Check them out in the description below. Likes and subs and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.